Hi, my name is Han. I'm a migration agent and lawyer of ISD. Today I'm going to talk to you about the sponsorship limitation which um, related to SPA visa and fiancé visa. So as you know, the um, limitation is you can only sponsor two people in your life. Uh, however, of course, there are waiver for this condition. But first, I'm going to talk about how we're going to count uh, sponsorship. Okay. So, um, for example, um, first, if the sponsorship uh, was granted, but the visa applicant didn't travel to Australia, will it be counted? Yes, it will be counted. The second is, um, if the sponsorship is uh, refused, then uh, would it be counted at once? No. The third one is um, when you are sponsoring that person and in the middle of that being assessed, uh, you withdraw the sponsorship, then it doesn't count. The next one is if the fiancé visa was granted and the fian your fiancé never come to Australia at all, uh, she actually never arrived in Australia on that visa, will it be count? Yes, it's still be count because the sponsorship was approved and she will grant the visa. No matter whether she come to here to Australia or not is not relevant. The next one is uh, the sponsorship will approve, the visa will grant it, but the, then the visa will cancel. Will it be counts? Yes. For example, like uh, you are in Australia, you sponsor a lady from Philippines and the lady was, uh, was granted the fiancé visa or spa visa. But before she actually arrived at Australia, she would cancel the visa. Then, and she actually never come to Australia at all, right? But the sponsorship still be count. Another one is uh, when you were sponsoring another person, uh, a, a person, and then the domestic violence happened for some reason, allegation happened, and then the visa applicant, uh, she didn't have any um, contact with you after the incident of domestic violence and you tell the department you no longer wish to sponsor her. However, because she is, um, she claimed that she is a victim of domestic violence and if she can make a claim to the department of her home affair, then, um, and it's, if it's successful, then it's counted at one as the sponsorship was approved and it's one. And um, so I'll just talk about several cases where uh, the sponsorship was, um, it's, it's will be count, yeah? And of course, you have only two chances to sponsor uh, in your life. However, of course, there are waiver condition uh, which attach to this condi uh, which attach to this criteria, and you might uh, use that um, that waiver condition. Uh, the waiver condition is um, there must be compelling reason for you to apply the third one to sponsor the third one. For example, there would be at least four main. A reason that you can use to uh, overcome the sponsorship limitation. The first one is if you and the new partner had a child together. The second one is um, the previous partner she died, uh, so she you know you sponsor the says first time or the second time, but one of them died, so you can use that as a compelling reason for you to marry the third time. The next one is. Um, if your relationship is long-standing. So it means that you and the third person, the, the person the third time that you're going to sponsor, uh, you have a very long-standing relationship and you have to prove very well that the relationship will be the last one. And last one would be um, your one time, one of the two times that you sponsor, your, that visa applicant, one of the visa applicants had a child with you and she abandoned your child, uh, the, your guy's child, like, you know, she has a child with you, but she abandoned that child and she go away. And then you actually stay in, um, you know, you have to take care of the baby and the children. The children is under 18, they really need the care of the, of the mother and the father. Um, and then you, you say that you want to bring the lady from other country to Australia, um, you know, or you have some here, you have some partner that you um, you want to sponsor the third, the third time, so you can, so that that person can actually uh, take care of your child. Then it would be a compelling reason. So um, that four circumstances, of course, the case officer will look at your case closely and uh, will assess whether you are actually eligible for the sponsorship for the third time. 
Um, also, you know, as you know, that um, the sponsorship, you have limitation of five years gap. So, for example, uh, you are, you, the first time you apply for, you sponsor another a first person. Then uh, the second time you want to sponsor, you must count whether the, the first time you, the, the, the five years already um, passed. So the, the way to calculate five years is you have to look at the date you lost the sponsorship for the first one and the day that you're going to lose the sponsorship for the second one, that two days. So the day that the visa applicant apply for the first one and the date that the next time, the second one, that the visa applicant, uh, the second applicant, yeah, the next lady, she apply for the visa application and you will sponsor her. So that, that two dates is very important and you have to look at your previous application in order to know whether the five years has passed. And also, also, uh, you can also overcome the five years waiver uh, in circumstances where you have compelling reason, just like, you know, like the two time uh, sponsorship limitation. If you have a child together, you might um, ask the department to actually waive that condition. If you have a long standing relationship, you are, can ask for that sponsorship, um, for that condition to be waived. So there's, there's a lot of case uh, where you know, a lot of waiver um, criteria you can actually use to actually apply uh, and to sponsor another person to Australia. And I hope that you would uh, have a, a general understanding of uh, the sponsorship uh, requirement for Spa Visa Fiance Visa. And um, if you like, you can click on like. And if you don't like, please click on dislike. And uh, I appreciate all comment regarding to my video clip. And um, uh, if you want to know more about service, you can come to uh, isdservices.org uh, or ISD, uh, um, ISD web Facebook or my old Facebook or uh, something like that. Then uh, we, we will, if you want to contact us, you can call us and we will discuss more about your case. And uh, I'll give you some advice regarding whether you are eligible to sponsor. And um, thank you and goodbye.